The first thing I want to do is take off all of this plywood and all of this back in. Right, that light, I need to take that off and strip that out. And then the floor, but I'm going to do the floor last. And I also need to take out all of the bulkhead and then just strip everything out and then get a blank canvas. And I probably am going to put these black covers back over these holes. But what I want to do is put some insulation in the inside of all of the doors. The bulkhead is now all gone and it is starting to feel a bit bigger in here now. And I've moved on to the insulation. I've started to fill like the cavities like inside here and up there. I've gone as far as I can. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure I don't leave any gap. This is where we're at. That roof is ready for like the carpet, I think. I still need to do obviously the side bits and the walls, you know, the rest of the walls. This side's fully uh, ready for, you know, the rest of this. Those panels are back on and all the insulation is in behind them. So the next thing I'm gonna have a go at is doing all this wall on this side. All right guys, so it's been a couple of weeks since I last did a bit of videoing. I've just been busy with life, but here and there, the odd hour that I have free, I've managed to pretty much finish all of the insulation. Now the floor, it's been a bit of a pain because it's all very rigid. So I've had to cut out all these little strips to make it level. And then I've been moving on to doing the plywood for the actual floor. The flooring is finally done. And I'm really happy with how it's come out. I've tucked it under all these trims and under the carpet there, trying to make it look as neat as possible. All I need to do now is finish off these last bits of insulation and then I'm going to get it carpeted. So I am moving on to the next step of the project and that is sorting out all the electrics. I'm going to use this bit of wood for my like fuse board where all the main stuff's going to be bolted to. It's all going to sit on there, on that wall. Um, the batteries, I'm going to get in the proper battery tray so they don't move. Uh, this wiring and split charger where it will be linked to the engine battery so it will charge these batteries when the engine's running but when the engine is not on this smart split charger will isolate those batteries from the engine so that doesn't go flat and i'll always have charge in there and i've got the roof lights on already i've got an additional light on here so when you come inside the back of the van at night in the dark that light will be on so you'll be able to see so i just got another one off ebay that's the same and uh just put that in there Okay, so step one is done, linked to the battery. I've got it going to the bulkhead with the fuse in it, and then it goes through the bulkhead. I've used a factory um, hole for the wiring harness, so I don't have to cut anything. Um, I'm gonna bolt that in last, so it doesn't, so I don't risk any uh, arcing out or anything like that. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. And then on the inside, just taking a couple of books out, and then it comes through nice and neatly. So I'm going to be running it along like the centre console and then on the way to the batteries. Okay, so progress. I've got the battery cable from the engine. It's gone all the way under here behind these trims to the two main batteries. I've got the battery trays on and that's all bolted down nice. Uh, I've got my fuse ward up. So now I'm going to start linking the batteries together um, and start getting the fuse box, split charger and this earth strap all uh, on the board and try and make it as neat as possible. I've got my fuse board layout pretty much exactly how I want it and basically what's going to happen is the positive terminals from each battery is going to go up through these two fuses and then to my split charger. Now anything that I'm going to use off these batteries will join after these two fuses so if anything ever does go wrong these will pop and then the batteries will be separate from uh, any issues. Uh, my fuse um box i'm gonna have that wired in at the isolator after these so anything that go you know could possibly go wrong on that end that will pop those fuses i'm basically just trying to make the system as safe and reliable as possible and um, then i've got this um for my solar panels i'm going to probably install them at a later date because all i really need to do with these is just earth them on my earth board and then put one of these to the positive battery i'm pretty much finished at that I've got everything I've got going on right now all wired up and done. Um, the actual switchboard for the lights and stuff, I'm not actually going to wire up yet until I've got all the cabinets and stuff in so I know everything's going. So for now, these white cables here are just for the um, lights on the ceiling. I've got them all earthed and ground in there with the fuse. So I'll have a cable that comes out of there to the switch and then back to the lights. So for now, guys, this is pretty much how it all looks. And as you can see on here, 
that's 12.4 volts that's the uh, voltage of the battery in the engine bay and then here we've got 12.1 which is these two so if i go over it and turn the van on so you can so you can hear it you can hear it clicking in so there 14.4 and then that switches on and starts putting voltage into here well to the batteries but you can read the voltage for these batteries because when i've got my solar panels in this is directly linked to them too so there it works the split charger works and then when you turn it off the split charger will then click off and uh, stop feeding these two batteries so you can see the difference there i'm pretty happy with the progress so far managed to get all that knocked out um, other electric stuff like the fridge, uh, the solar panels, um, I'm going to have a, probably get a diesel night heater as well. Um, I'm going to wire all that lot up when the counter's in so I'll know exactly what lengths and where and stuff's going basically. So um, for electric wise that's pretty much about it but that's the basic sort of setup. Um, but from there all you're doing is linking it to the fuse box and then you're good to go. Alright moving on I've managed to get this sort of quarter piece done. And I managed to do it all with one piece and the hardest thing was just getting all these bends and curves done and I found that if you start in the middle and then sort of work your way out you can sort of move the creases to the edge where you're going to cut the pieces off so that's that done and now I'm going to move on to this door and I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse so you guys can see how I've done it and this one I've done first which is quite easy because only a little bit I just have to take these out take these out like I've done here so I can cut round it and uh, hopefully get that side looking as good as, as that side. Your heart makes no sound. I'll find valid in your eyes. He'll always be my night sky. So this is like the first step of it done. I've managed to get all that nice behind that latch. And then follow, you see this line here? That's where the seal sits. So I've just gone a bit further behind that. So hopefully there's no water issues. Yeah, as you go further down and you try and do these bends, that's when it wants to wrinkle, but you just nice and gentle with it and massage it out. And there we have it, the final finished piece. I'm pretty happy with how it's all come out actually. There's no creases and around where I've cut around the door handle and that latch, it's actually come out pretty well. Um, one thing I will say is if you're looking for um, an adhesive spray, this stuff is actually amazing. The kit I got, they gave me like 10 cans of this and I've only gone through like two so far. And the other thing, these blades, for some reason, this material absolutely destroys these blades. I've gone for about 10 so far. So if you're looking at doing this, that adhesive spray is really good and get extra blades because you just go through them like hot knife for a butter, it's crazy. Um, but now I'm gonna move on, finish this piece here and that piece there. If you're wondering why I use the entire roll and didn't cut out a piece to measurement, when you're stretching out around these sort of curves and bends and stuff, you end up using more than you think you would use. So after doing, you know, one of the first pieces, I just do it with a full roll and then I know I'm going to have plenty left over. It's well worth doing that. All right. So moving on to the next step, I want to get these sort of B pillars all carpeted and it's going to be so much easier with these seats out of the way. Um, and the floor, the carpet underneath is disgusting. There's fag ends, there's nuts, there's wrappers, there's all kinds of nastiness so i'm going to give it a good hoover first before i do anything else because i don't want to work in this dirty environment and then i'm going to start carpeting yeah get these people loose but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to carpet the floor as well because i've got loads of this stuff and yeah i'm going to put it on the floor now my first thought was is it going to be hard wearing is it going to be okay for me to use this but i've got floor mats so there's not really going to be any like you're not really going to be standing on it and there are like tears and stuff in this corner it already looks pretty crap so i think i'm just going to go over the whole lot so it all looks like brand new um and then i'm going to move on and do the roof go over all this i'm going to have to take out both the sun visors take out these surrounds um and go over all of that and then eventually 
the front sort of A pillar trims there, I'm gonna go over them as well. So I've got the floor completely finished and it did take some doing going around all these like bends and twists and trying to get it all fitted properly and nice and I've got all the bits down there. And I went as far as like the factory carpet on the top, right around there. And then just done little cuts for the sort of cables and the handbrake cable. And I've started moving on to the B pillar so this bit's done, it's looking pretty good. I've just got these last bits to do, but I've got some more insulation in these cavities. Um, it's surprising how much you could actually fit in there because it's all just hollow. So that's where I'm at. So I just need to carpet the rest of these bits and then put it all back together because I need the van up and running, ready for work tomorrow. All right, so I've got all these seats back in and all the carpets all nice and done. I should have maybe got some rubble mats over those carpet mats. I don't really like them. I've only had them a few months and uh, they're starting to wear already, but overall, I'm happy with how this is looking. I gave all these trims a big clean out when I got them out because they're absolutely filthy. Uh, it's getting a bit dark now, but all the B pillars are done. They're all, all nicely carpeted. All right, so moving on to the next part of the build, I'm starting to put my cabinets in. And instead of buying them, I'm just gonna make them completely out of scratch because it's cheaper and it's what I wanna do. Well, that's where I'm up to right now. I've pretty much done this final sort of box section here. The, la the next bit I've got to do is all this bit here. Just a bit of a tip for anyone that's doing something like this. Triangles shapes are very good to use because they don't like to twist or bend. So I've kind of done that piece there and that one there. Uh, and to get into the metal, I've used like these sort of self-tapping screws that goes into the metal. And obviously it's double skinned with a big gap in the middle. So you haven't really got to worry about going all the way through to the outside. I haven't planned or drawn up any of this, so I've just sort of made it up as I go along. So moving on to the last piece, or sort of the last bit of the front box section, I've made like this little jig here just to hold this piece of wood, and then I've just been measuring up so I can cut out this nice bit of wood here so it all fits nice and snug. So I'm going to get that all screwed in place now, and then I'm going to have a piece that comes off the side of here and like attached to the wall. So I've got a little bit more progress done. I've put a panel in there and here, this brace in here, which is all nice and strong. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. So I'm waiting for my sink to arrive, which will be in the next couple of days. I'm just going to wait for that to get here before I do any more, because I want to know when it sits in, how I'm going to do it, what room I have. All right, so I have got some things that have arrived. It's been an expensive week, but I've got my sink. I've got my diesel night here and I've got my fridge. So first thing I wanna do is sort of sort out the sink, how it's gonna go in there. Um, I've also bought more wood to make the sort of the top. I've gone for like these like sort of, I mean like five or six inch wide planks. And I'm gonna do individual sheets and I'm gonna like sand them down and burn them so they look like rusty and whatnot. All right, so I've pretty much got how the frame's gonna work for the sink. I've made sort of like this little frame that comes off the existing bit of wood I've made to just try and support it. I've got all my sink pretty much fitted now. I just need to fit like the tap and the pipes and stuff, but it's all on and done. And this is what the counter's gonna look like. It's just gonna be like sheets of wood that I'm gonna sand down, uh, cut to shape, and I'm gonna burn them like that. So I kind of like the look of that. It's like rustic. And then I'm gonna like varnish over top of it. So it looks sort of, so it'll be like waterproof as well. That's my plan. So a bit of a fast forward. The panelling, I've started to put all that in. Um, I actually put all the seats back in first to sort of measure where I could put the cupboard doors. So I had to actually come further forward to get the cupboard doors right. Um, so it doesn't get in the way of the seat before it turns into a bed. Um, right now I'm getting this little square cut out here to put my switch block in. I've got some doors. Uh, it's all fitted on. You can see where I've got like progressively better putting hinges on. Like that one there looks really nice and neat. And the first one looks absolutely awful. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got some wood filler to fill out all the sort of screw holes and stuff. So I'm going to try and make that look a bit like neater. And once it's painted, hopefully you won't see it. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. I've pretty much got everything done. 
and ready for paint. I've got my door handles on. I've smoothed over and sanded over all the screws, trying to make it as smooth as possible. So I'm going to get painting and we'll see what this looks like. All right, so that's pretty much the final product done of the sort of counter side cabinets that I've been making. I'm going to be fitting this roller shutter in this space here. Now, I did have a panel that sort of screwed on there, but it just looked rubbish. I didn't like it. So I've ordered this kit off eBay. All right, so I've got all the rail installed on both sides. All I've done is put one screw on top of either side so the bottom can just pull out ready for the shutter to slide up and i'm just doing the last bit which is cutting this little strip off so it fits in there nice and even so i'm going to crack on get that off and then hopefully it all fits nice and neat fingers crossed well i'm finally here and it is on uh yeah i did have to cut a bit like in the top here you can't see but basically there's a beam going across there and it was just catching it so i had to chisel some away make a bit of a mess but overall guys i am pretty happy with how that looks next thing table so i've got a table that's coming it's got like a rail that goes along there then it hooks on it and then it's got a leg that folds out all nice and neat my table has arrived and i've started putting things together it comes as this sort of black rail that goes along the top here and it like hooks on and all you do is literally just screw it on there and there it was a lot longer and I think the idea of this is, is so if you've got a long counter, you can then shimmy the table along and back. So I've just screwed it on. I've put it as wide as I can have it. And it's got these little caps that go on the back of here just to cover it all up. And there we have it. It's all in and done. It's a bit hard to show you all out. I mean, I can do my wide angle lens, but the quality of the videos just isn't great. But anyway, this is how it looks. It's like a grey sort of slate, and I think it goes with like the interior. Table's done, the shutter door's done. The last thing that needs to go inside the camper van, and I've actually had for so long, and I just haven't put it in because I've been working on everything and I needed the space. But the rock and roll bed is finally in, and it's all bottled down. I did it last night. There wasn't really much to record and show you because the bed's in and it's done the, all i'm doing is bolting down it was hard to do any video in so i kind of sacked it off and here it is all pretty much done obviously i've put the table out of the way just to give you a bit of a better view but the rock and roll bed is here and i made all the cabinet to match the seat so it could all fit nice and neatly together that's why i went with like a roller shutter door so you could get in and out you know so i don't have any knobs or anything on the cabinets so i tried to get it all to work nicely together and it is finally done. I cannot wait to get out in this thing. I'm just gonna put this bed down and uh, see what it's like. This is my first lay down in the new bed and it is actually pretty comfy. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be about it for this video. I'm probably gonna sleep in it soon. Or if, or if me and the missus have an argument, you know where to find me. And my heating's on. It is a comfortable 17 degrees in here right now, but it actually feels a bit hotter because at the top where it was sat, it's warmer and the thermostat's at the bottom of that. But anyway, I'm waffling on. Anyway, I'm going now. Have a good weekend and I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. Help me out, do me a favor. Share to a friend if you think it's gonna be useful or just share it anyway, even if they don't like it, share it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later guys.